So then Thanos and pretty much anybody else that isn't basically just a lot of Hey folks, so I know it's been a while. It's been a month or two at least. We've been just really busy. I had a bunch of busy days where I was doing video stuff. Holly's in school. You're looking for a new house and we're looking for a new car and we're looking for a whole bunch of other stuff. So in the next couple of episodes, you might see stuff getting moved around or whatnot, depending on how frequently I update these, or I might just be in a new location altogether. So we'll see what happens. Anyways, today we're gonna talk about spoilers. This episode isn't gonna be full of any kinds of spoilers, but it's gonna be filled with explanations of spoilers. So beware. I don't know. Everybody knows what spoilers are. So I don't think I really need to explain that to you. But I guess what I want to touch on is the responsibility that we have, whether we realize it or not, uh, to allow other people to enjoy things that we have already enjoyed. For example, the first thing I want to talk about is movies. Movies are always very controversial. Keep in mind, all of these notes are going to be, again, my preference, and they might be a little bit on the conservative side, just because I like to allow people the chance to go and experience exciting moments for themselves. I love showing people new trailers to movies and seeing their reactions to those. I love watching those reactions to trailers online. I love watching the movie and just feeling the energy of the crowd around me when something surprising or devastating or hilarious or awesome happens. I just love that rush of going to a movie on opening night if I can or opening weekend if I can and just experiencing all of those hardcore fans that got their tickets right away. That's not to say that there aren't fans that get their tickets a little bit later because uh, they don't have the money at the moment or they don't have the time at the moment. They have other responsibilities to take care of first, but my wife and I just really love going on that first night or that first couple of nights and just experiencing the energy of the other fans. It's just a really exciting time. So movies, I have a little bit of a conservative outlook when it comes to sports spoilers on movies. We're coming at this from the angle of if you're posting a review online, pretty much always blanket it with a spoiler warning. But if you're posting a video of a reaction or you're posting some questions that you have publicly about what happened in the movie, just be aware of these couple of things. So there's about two or three different times that you need to be aware of when it comes to spoilers in regards to anything. But for movies, first of all, release day. Now, back when I was just getting into going going to the theaters quite regularly. Movies would come out with early showings on, let's say it came out on a Friday. So they'd come out with early showings on a Friday. Fast forward several years to now, and you have movies that are coming out on Thursday night, for example, for a Friday showing. So there's like a 24 hour preview showing. Now I've never gone to any of those because personally, I wanna experience it opening night. I don't wanna have to wait and keep it a secret an extra day longer than everybody else that could possibly go and see it. That's so annoying annoying to me. I want to be able to talk about it. So, but coming up at the end of May, my wife and I and a few friends are going to go see the new Solo Star Wars Story movie. That's my first time seeing it on a pre-show day. So it's going to be on the Thursday, not on the Friday release day. So uh, that doesn't really make much difference to probably most of you, but I, it's just a weird thing for me to go before it's technically premiered. When you go and see a movie opening night, keep in mind that probably until the following Monday or so, at least let the weekend go before you post anything about it. I think just out of respect for the people that want to go and see it, you can post reactions to it, but even those sometimes, just an emoji via text can give people a warning as to what to expect. And while they've already probably watched the trailers, hopefully they haven't spoiled it for themselves yet. Just be aware that some of those extra things that you do and say can give a little bit too much insight into the movie. I experienced that with the most recent Infinity War movie for Avengers. I saw a couple of spoilers the day of. Granted, I saw it on Saturday and it was released on Friday with preview showings on the Thursday. So there was already like a dozen showings by the time I got to see it. And so there was plenty of spoilers out there. And I know for myself to stay away from social media, but I was going through it like crazy anyways. And I saw a couple of things that just kind of tipped me off to a few things that happened in the movie, uh, which I wish I hadn't seen, but in the end, uh, I still enjoyed the movie. Great movie. Anyways, moving on. If the movie hasn't just been released, like if this is like a week later or something like that, 
I would say definitely blanket it with a spoiler warning. Like I said before, you can never go wrong with that. But when you get to the point where movies are released on home video three to five months later nowadays, so if you get to the point where it's released on video already and you want to write a review or something like that about it, honestly, I feel like at that point, there's been plenty of opportunity to see it. People can even rent it for really cheap for like three bucks. They don't even have to go to the movie theater or buy the movie at that point. I don't think you owe anybody any warning or heads up by the point that it comes out on video. Okay, and then the second thing is television. That follows pretty closely in the form of media, but not really in the form of distribution. So television show is different. If you're paying for cable, you're already paying to get the television show. So at least have the thought that some people get a little bit busy during the week and don't have time to sit down on a Tuesday or Wednesday evening to watch that show. So they might need to wait till the weekend or the following week. If the show airs, give at least two days, give 48 hours before you start posting a ton of stuff about it, just to give people that buffer period to like get a chance to watch it. If the air date was a week ago and there's already a new episode out or there's a new episode coming out that night, I think, again, a spoiler warning is probably fine, but lots of review websites that I see post reviews two days, three days after the original air date of that previous episode. And by that point, there's hardly any spoiler warning because you know going into the article that that's what they're going to be talking about. So I think that's just common sense to stay away from articles related to that. But by the time it's two weeks or later from a series, I don't think you have any obligation to be responsible for other people reading or not reading your article. If you're talking amongst friends and one of them says, ooh, I haven't watched that show and it's been out for five years, yeah, you might wanna just say sucker and spoil it for them, but you could also choose just to be the nice guy and not give it away. And if you have the television series or the movie that they're talking about, offer to loan it to them because then they can experience it or get them to sit down and watch it with you because maybe you wanna watch it over again and enjoy that again. There's lots of stuff that you can pick up through a second or third or fourth or fifth viewing of a movie. So, and number three, we're going to talk about books and nowadays audiobooks because those are a big thing. Probably 80% of the books that I listen to or that my wife listens to or reads are technically audiobooks. We have a ton of books in our house. We have read a ton of books, but now that we have iPods, now that we've got podcasts, now that we've got iTunes or Audible or public library system that lets you take out a CD or download an MP3 file of a book and listen to it for your rental period, that's, I think, fantastic. But then that also means that people can go through books much quicker than they used to be able to. So as far as books go if it's a new release I would say give it a week before you start posting a ton of stuff about it again if th these are like articles about reviews if you blanket statement something with a spoiler warning I'd say you have about a month that you can use in that first month just blanket it with a spoiler warning but if it comes down to the point where it's been past a month and people have had a chance to actually buy the book or borrow or download the book online, then I think that you don't have any obligation after that, especially if it's a book that comes out hardcover and you get around to the paperback edition, then it's just all bets are off. Video games. I don't play video games myself, but I kind of feel like video games are a mixture of a book and a movie. Uh, there is storylines to a lot of them. So I would say maybe give it a month before you start blabbing about the ending to your friends. None of this is life or death. All of this is completely the things that I know and things that I wanna just talk to you about to get off my mind or get off my chest. But lastly, the important thing is to protect yourself from spoilers. There are lots of other ways that you can spoil a movie or a book series or something like that for yourself. Uh, as far as when it comes to movies, soundtracks are a pretty big deal. I love listening to the scores of movies, but I have to stay away from that score until I've seen the movie because sure shooting, I'll get onto iTunes and I'll go to download the music and the final track will be something that gives away the ending of the movie. Uh, now, if you're a person that really loves concerts or sports, games, I think you're just kind of out of luck because people watch sports games every single night and there is way too many to keep in mind as to when they came out and when they didn't and if you just happen to be talking about it at work the next day or there's a video of a surprise appearance at that concert uploaded to YouTube, the title of it is probably going to be blank invites blank up on stage crowds goes wild and you're just out of luck. So stay off the internet if you don't want spoilers at all. I think that's pretty common sense but I don't know if anybody actually wants to just stay off the internet. So, and of course you don't have to follow these rules at all. I'm pretty sure that the idea for this video came from an article I read a number of years ago, which I cannot find now. That article's author had 
written about their preferences on spoilers for things like books and movies, etc. So if you can find that article, post it below. I'll add it into the description because I don't want to steal somebody else's thunder. But I just thought that it was something to talk to you about, something that you could know a little bit more about. Again, if you have suggestions about what I should talk about next, just feel free to leave them in the description below and I might try to tackle them in another video. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again. Probably my favorite non-spoiler spoiler was posting about having just seen X-Men Apocalypse and somebody telling me, oh, I bet you that the metal guy turns out to be bad. It's like spoiling the ending for someone about Passion of the Christ.